So, today, we are talking about objective morality. Is there such a thing as an objective standard of morality, yes or no? Now, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say that it is actually self-evident. That it is fairly obvious and fairly discernible. Let's start this way. There are only two possibilities when we talk about morals. Okay? Either there's an objective standard of morality or morality is subjective. When you put it that way, that would mean subject to morality would mean oh, there's only one possibility if morality is subjective. We ourselves, human beings, created moral ethics, created moral standards, created ethics. Now, I, that's where the self-evident comes in. Because to me, that is so obviously not possible. Okay? If you, if you know anything about the ethical conditions of human beings, that would strike you as simply not a plausible argument. If you look at the ethical condition of the world today and you have any understanding of the ethical condition of mankind, that would not strike you as a plausible argument that human beings created ethics. Now, what I'm going to argue is that just like the scientific process is investigative in nature, so is the discovery of moral truths. We say, when we are talking about moral truths, we say we are looking to find the truth implying quite clearly that there is something there that, that can be discerned, that can be found out, just like with science. What we are doing in science, we are not doing a creative process, we're doing an investigative process. We're trying to discern truths that are already in place. We do the same thing with morals. Now, that's just the language we use, you would say. That's just the language we use to talk about morality. Yes, but language usually... Language is usually a strong indicator of the concepts in our experience of a subject. Ra language is not random. It indicates something behind the language that we already sort of, you know, sense. We are descriptive in how we term things and how we phrase things. And the things we are descriptive about are concepts that are embedded in how we view things. So if we say we're going to find the truth, we wouldn't say that. We wouldn't label it that way unless that's how we all sort of understood ourselves to already be doing it. It is not a creative process when we look for morals. That's relatively important. It's not proof one way or the other. But let's go further with this. Okay, so I'm arguing that morality is objective. S say for the sake of argument that you agree with that, or you're at least willing to entertain the notion. It would follow... Now, this is a common sense argument. Again, this is axiomatic as far as I'm concerned. Self-evident. It would follow, therefore... That just like there are laws of logic, okay, the laws of logic being the law of identity, the law of, of uh, non-recurrent middle, and the law of contradictions. Those are laws of logic, you can look them up, those exist, nobody argues with that. Just, it would follow that if there is such a thing as an objective standard of morality, just as there is an objective standard of logic, okay, then there should be laws of morality. There should be trans... Ascendant laws, pre, there should be premises or concepts that are already out there to be found that are applicable in almost all moral situations. Just like there are with logic. There are three laws of logic. I think there may be a fourth, I'm not sure about that. But there are at least three laws of logic. Okay? Law of identity, the law of contradiction, and the law of excluded middle. Those are the three laws of logic. Now, in logic, one of the things, there was, a, there was an argument by Matt Slick about the transcendent uh, argument for the existence of God. The mistake he made was trying to create a false dichotomy where he shoehorned the idea of there cannot be logic if there is no God. Well, it doesn't really work like that. You can be an atheist and you can be a Christian and we can both discern logic in a given situation. Logic is transcendent in nature. In other words, I only mean by that, that you go 100 years into the future, the law of logic is going to be the same. You go 100 years into the past, the law of logic can be the same. Why am I going here? Because it is my firmly com committed belief that if morality is objective in nature, there should be laws of morality that we can find. Now, there's one atheist I know of so far, 
His name is Scott Clifton. Excellent. Excellent. First-rate thinker. He, I highly recommend his, his YouTube channel. It's called Theoretical uh, Bull something. Bull stuff, let's say. And it's very good. He is the only atheist I've ever heard argue that there is an objective standard of morality. Most other atheists try to say there is not, that it's subjective. Subjective. If morality is objective, there should be such things as laws of morality. So check this out. Do unto others as you do unto you, as they do unto you. The golden rule. That looks suspiciously to me like a law of morality. A law of morality, just like a law of logic, would be transcendent in nature. You go a hundred years into the future. Do unto others as they do unto you. That, is it possible that that is a law of morality, that I just found one? Well, let's check it out. If you go a hundred years into the future, does it solve a moral problem? Does it answer a moral problem, first off? Yes, obviously. Why is slavery wrong? Why is slavery wrong? Well, I wouldn't want to be a slave, ever. Therefore, I shouldn't want slavery to exist. Do unto others as you would have them do unto me. Because I, since I wouldn't want to be a slave, I should not want anybody to be a slave. Is it transcendent? 100 years in the future. Go 100 years in the future. Does it still hold true? Let's use, let's use cruelty. Let's say uh, you are torturing somebody. You're a mean person. And you're torturing somebody just for kicks. Okay. I'm a great moral, moral, moral person. And I come up to you, a great moral teacher, I come up to you and I say, Sir, please don't do that. You're torturing that poor man. And you go, well, it's fun. It's fun to torture him. I say, yes, but you're ignoring the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And you go, hmm, I never thought about it that way. I wouldn't want him to torture me, therefore I will stop torturing him. We have just solved the moral dilemma with what looks like suspiciously a, goal, a moral law, forever applicable, transcendent of time and space. Now, let's go 100 years into the past. There's another guy torturing somebody, you know, because he doesn't like him. Now, I go up to him and I say, sir, don't do that. He says, why not? I'm enjoying myself. I say, yes, but you're ignoring the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Looks sus suspiciously to me like it is a law of morality. Now, some of you may debate that. I'm not saying that's a done deal or case closed. If you debate that, go for it. I would love to hear counter arguments. But counter arguments means understand what I'm saying and counter the argument. A lot of you atheists just take cheap shots with concepts you barely understand. Don't come back to me and go, you know, that's circular logic. It's not circular reason. Don't throw out things from other, other atheists have said and misapply them here. If you want to debate anything that I have asserted, go for it. Remember, I am arguing that that is self-evident, which means you cannot say, prove it, provide evidence. Your theory has no evidence. I'm saying it is self-evident. Okay, you can debate my theory. Right now it's still in the working stages, so I would welcome intelligent debate. But, as I am not playing stump the atheist, therefore God exists. Do not try to play stump the Christian, therefore there is no God. Debate the actual concept underneath. I welcome it because it obviously needs some work. So, the working thesis thus far. There is an objective standard of morality. It is because there are only two possibilities, objective or subjective. If subjective, that means that morality is man-made. I, I argue that that is not plausible. Given what we know about the moral condition of human beings, that is not even close to plausible. I am arguing that there are revealed truths to be discerned in moral equations. And when we look at a moral equation, we do not try to create a moral truth. We, we try to find a moral truth. We investigate for a moral truth. And we refer to sources outside of ourselves to do it, indicating that there is something to be discerned or found out. 
not something to be created or invented, indicating quite clearly that is objective, not subjective. Again, those are two mutually exclusive poles. If something is subjective, I create it. If something is objective, it, objective I discover its veracity. I either negate or agree with it, but I do not create it. Subjective, I create. It's very important because I'm arguing that it's self-evident. We don't create morals. We look for moral truths. We investigate moral truths. We try to find them out, indicating that they are there, somewhere out there in the nebulous ether to be discerned and found out, not to be invented by human beings. Now, you can, you can help me either build the idea of objective morality or take down the idea of objective morality. It is not a game changer as far, as far as the argument of whether there is a God or not. You used to think it was, now I, now I realize that it is not. Because there is at least one atheist out there who says that morality is objective, there may be another way of arriving at objective truth, just like there is with logic, wherein we do not require a God. So, the thesis thus far, so you're free, if you're an atheist, to agree that morality is objective. Okay, doesn't necessarily prove that there's a God. It would be kind of an indicator that there might be a God, because how else would they get there? But it doesn't necessarily prove it. Okay, maybe there's something even mysterious. You know, I used to argue that there is no material representation to moral, that they exist as concepts and they exist as ideas or precepts, hence, the, hence they could not have spontaneously emerged from gas. But maybe, maybe there's something about precepts and concepts that I don't understand. Maybe there's more to the story than that. Uh, so, it doesn't necessarily prove that there is no God. So you can agree with me and, and take up my side of the argument that there is such a thing as objective morals, that it is self-evident. I've argued this in other videos. If we go to Nazi Germany, there was an objective right and an objective wrong. There was, that's wrong to do, period. End of the discussion. That's all that objective morality means, is that in certain situations, not that we're always going to know what those situations are, but that in certain situations, we can say, that's right, that's wrong. That's right, that's wrong. Now, that's all I am talking about thus far.